washing my hands. Oh, Mr. Hoffman, how are you? Doing well, thank you. My name's Nancy. I'm going to be doing an assessment of your peripheral vascular system today. Um, I'm going to start out by asking you a couple of questions. Um, have you ever had any problems in your legs with varicose veins? No, I have not. Okay. Any problems with pain in your calves or in your thighs when you walk that then stops when you rest? No. All right. And any history of problems with your blood vessels that you know about? No. Okay. All right. Good. So I'm going to start out by looking at your upper extremities. And so um, just if you can hold your arms out, that would be great. And I'm looking at the color of the skin. And I'm also touching with the back of my hands to check temperature all the way down to the fingertips so your skin is warm. The skin color is appropriate for ethnicity. I do not see any pallor or cyanosis. And I'm looking also at your arms for any lesions or anything abnormal, which I do not see. I see you've been out in the sun a little bit. Yes, I have. So it's summertime, so that's okay. And then as I move down the hands, I'm also looking at your fingertips. I'm checking for capillary refill by pressing on each of the nails on both hands. The fingernails are pink, which is normal. And I also am checking the profile sign, which uh, I'm looking right here, the angle here should be less than 160 degrees. The radial pulse is gonna be on the side of the thumb. So which is gonna be this side. To find the radial pulse, it's gonna be your most common pulse. I'm gonna place two fingers just lateral to the midline of the thumb. Underneath my fingers, I can feel the radial pulse right about there. The ulnar pulse will be found on the opposite side as the radial pulse. So thumb side is this side. I'm gonna be feeling on the ulnar side at about the same location, just slightly lateral to midline. And then I'm gonna move on to the brachial pulses. And here again, I am checking for the strength. The rhythm is regular and the rate is within normal limits. For palpation of the epitrochlear lymph node, you wanna elevate the arm. 90 degrees of elbow flexion. Take your hand, go underneath in the groove between the biceps and the triceps, three centimeters superior to the elbow crease. Use your circular palpation to find the epitrochlear lymph node. You will be posterior to where you were for the brachial pulse assessment. You'll also be slightly superior to that assessment as well. This is gonna be a video on the Allen's test for blood circulation in the hand. Connect the test, ask your patient to open and close the hand several times as quickly as possible and then squeeze the hand tightly. Then compress the radial and the ulna arteries with your thumbs. Hold it quickly and then ask your patient to open the hand and release the radial artery and you can see how the blood is streaming back into the hand quickly. We will now repeat the same process and release the ulna artery. This test determines the patency of the ulna and radial arteries. With a healthy artery, the blood should stream back into the hand quickly, indicated by the red color. Make sure to always compare both hands to determine if an artery is impaired. I'm going to look now at your legs. I'm going to have you put your legs up, and if you want to lay back, if that's more comfortable, it's fine. <clears throat> so I'm looking at the lower extremities, first looking at the color, which is appropriate for ethnicity. I'm looking at hair distribution. And the reason for that is when there's poor circulation, sometimes then there's no hair on the lower extremities anymore. And I'm also looking at the lower extremities for any lesions or anything abnormal. <clears throat> it looks like there's a, um, a little something here. I was riding my bicycle and uh, my uh, leg, uh, was going through a big mud puddle and my leg uh, came uh, away from the pedal and scraped the pedal. Oh, okay. How long ago was that? Uh, that would be approximately two weeks. Okay. Does it seem like it's healing okay? It does. Okay. All right. I'd be concerned if it was taking a long time for that to heal, but it seems like it's healing normally.
All right, I'm also going to touch the lower extremities first for temperature. I use the back of my hands and I come all the way down, all the way down to the toes. And his skin is warm all the way down to the toes. To examine the inguinal area, have the patient lie supine and flex his knees slightly. Add a drape and adjust the gown to preserve his modesty. Then palpate the superior inguinal nodes near the surface over the inguinal canals, as well as the inferior inguinal nodes deeper in the groin. Palpate for the femoral pulse by placing your first two fingers between the pubic symphysis and the anterior superior iliac spine over the inguinal area. Put the fingers into the popliteal fossa, grasp the knee firmly with the thumbs on the top, ask the patient to keep the knee nice and relaxed for you and push up firmly into the back of the knee, raising the leg slightly. If the patient assists you with this, ask them to relax the leg so it's nice and loose and push up again firmly with the fingers from both hands. Hold this position for a few seconds, feeling for a firm, deep, regular pulse. The dorsalis pedis pulses right on the top of the foot and you want to check the strength. Normal would be 2 plus. The rhythm should be regular and the rate should be within normal limits. And you look at other um, assessment findings to see if there is good circulation to the toes like the color, the temperature, and the capillary refill. Postibial pulse. So here's the malleolus right here, that bone. And you want to just slide your fingers right here. There's almost like a notch there. And that's where you're going to find that pulse. So, and you would obviously you would check both of these. Okay, if you can find them and do that at the same time so you can check symmetry, that would be good. And again, you're checking the strength. This is two plus, it's normal. The rate is within normal limits and the rhythm is regular. Dara, I'm going to lift your leg up to about 45 degrees. Let me know if it's getting uncomfortable for you. Mm -hmm. To perform Berger's test, elevate the patient's leg to 45 degrees. It quickly becomes pale if arterial supply is poor. Is that okay? So I'm going to get you to swing your legs over and drop them over the edge of the bed on that side. Then move the leg back and allow it to dangle over the edge of the bed. If arterial supply is impaired, a reactive hyperemia occurs and the leg becomes red. Tap test. The tap test involves applying pressure to the saphenofemoral junction or SFJ and tapping the distal varicose vein, feeling for a thrill at the SFJ. A thrill suggests incompetent valves between the varicose vein and the saphenofemoral junction. Begin by elevating the patient's leg and hold them up until the veins are empty. While the legs are elevated, apply direct pressure with your hand or by applying a tourniquet to the upper thigh to occlude the saphenous vein. While maintaining the occlusion, lower the patient's leg down and have them stand up. Now assess how long it takes for the blood to return distal to the occlusion site. If there has been no rapid refilling after approximately 20 seconds, quickly remove the tourniquet and continue assess for the refilling.